or even incentivize not only for students to not be late to classes, but also so they feel an added incentive to be as early as they can. We call this the QR code challenge at Westlake, and to summarize it very quickly, it's an exciting gamification of our attendance system. We wanted to make a game out of kids getting to class and getting to class on time, in fact, well early. So every student actually has an individualized QR code that's part of their binder. And it's been programmed to read the QR code of the student. So that means? So that means that it's been logged in. As they come into the classroom, the teacher with an iPad or an iPod scans them in. It actually records that scan to the second in a database we have. It's imported into a Google uh, Sheet and then it uh, accumulates points based off of our bell schedule for the day. And you can see the timestamp of each one. And then I copy all of those over, put them into their corresponding period for the time. Once it goes there, it goes over to the attendance worksheet and there's a code on each box that deciphers how early they are, if they're early or if they're absent or tardy. So we all have the QR codes and they're basically a Google form that's sent in with our nine number and that's how they track how early or late we were to class because it sends the time with it. And so every minute we are early to class, we get a point. So the earlier a kid is to arriving to class on time, the more points they accrue. When they come late, it is actually a 10 point hit. For example, if I have a student that goes early to class as, and it takes them one of the five minutes to get there, they learn more points than a student that shows up right at the bell. Every single day at the end of the day, students receive an email saying, what's your point total right now for the QR code challenge? And each month they can choose one of three incentives. Some type of a food party is a standing one. We've done pizza or pie. Some of the exciting prizes would be to challenge an administrator a game of their choice. Uh, play an administrator of your choice, the sport of your choice. So I got to verse a lot of kids in basketball and that was fun or to um, even get a cell phone permit for lunch and passing time. If a teacher is in the hallway and they see that sticker on that phone, the student will be questioned as to the use of their phone, and that's a privilege only for the students that have shown responsibility to be on time. What's a reward that we haven't done that you think would be pretty cool? Hmm. I would think it'd be fun if we could do a snowball fight, even though it's banned from schools because it does damage stuff. But it would be fun if it was out of the way of the school to be able to do one. A sanctioned snowball fight. <laughs> do you think that's going to happen? Uh, I'll, I'll put it under consideration. No, no, no. <laughs> the whole point of this is to model for students, you know, real life, that punctuality is important and it's acknowledged. I think that people are walking more quickly down the halls and sometimes running. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, everyone's, most everyone's hurrying back to class. Before we did the QR code challenge, there would be several students still in the halls when the bell rang. But then no, now that we do it, there's hardly any. So I think that's a big improvement. One of our goals at Jefferson Junior High was to improve our literacy scores. And so we decided as a school to um, read all together as a school the Ender's Game book. We chose Ender's Game uh, because there's different armies and so we can put the kids into different armies. Um, it's also a book that we chose because it's a book that a lot of uh, teachers, like their spouses and people they know, that was the book that impacted teenage boys the most. We decided to divide all of our school and all of our classes into different separate armies. So we have five total armies. Spider, Dragon, Phoenix, 
salamander, and lion. Each student is assigned to an army according to their advisory teacher. So you'll have like four or five advisory classes to, for an army. And then the students that are in those advisory classes, when they turn in their pride cards uh, to the library, it, it tallies up for their army. And the way that they earn points for their army is they earn these little Patriot cards. We have a system in place to help reinforce positive behaviors. And what we do is we have these Patriot Pride cards that we hand out whenever a student demonstrates any of these five characteristics or five behaviors that, that we want to reinforce. Um, the first one is if a student is prepared, and then it's if a student is respectful, if they are trying to improve or improving and then also if they're dedicated or exemplary. And so anytime a student demonstrates any of these behaviors, we try and reward them by recognizing that they did something well and then giving them this Patriot Pride card. And then they come into the library and they enter them into uh, a Google form um, and that tells us what army they're in and who gave uh, them the Patriot card. And then they earn points. So for every card that they enter in, they earn one point for their army. And then they can go spend it at a Pride card store and they can buy things like hot Cheetos and different things like that. At the end the, of each quarter the Pride Army that has the highest amount of Pride cards um, they get to do a special activity and so this helps we're trying to help motivate the students to continue uh, demonstrating these good behaviors. I've seen a huge difference in behavior in the library uh, this year over last year and I feel like there's a big um, behavior change in the school too. The kids are trying to earn those and that they want to do to do that to help out their army. It also brings like camaraderie because they're like, oh, what army are you in? What army are you in? And they're trying to like beat their friend's army or they're trying to get people that are in their army to turn their pride cards in so that they get more points and stuff like that. So it's really been a good experience for the kids in the school. Well, I've been asked to talk about our Grismart and our Grizz Bucks that are part of our token economy here at Granite Park. And this is a system that we created as part of our uh, Positive Behavior Integrated Supports or PBIS system. And the idea is that we're using our Grizz Bucks to reinforce positive behaviors with students that go along with our Grizzly Pride preparation, respect, integrity, dedication, and excellence. So as teachers and other staff see students exhibiting Grizzly Pride, they can reinforce that with a Grizz Buck, and we try to make sure that they let students know why they're getting that Grizz Buck, what part of Pride that they're being rewarded for. And then we have a school store that we keep basic things in that students like. Uh, candy is always popular. Takis are a big seller, and we are having Basically hundreds of Grizz Bucks a day go through our Grizz Mart and most of our teachers I think feel that they have been a helpful way to reinforce good behaviors with students in the classrooms and hallways. The reason why I really like Grizz Bucks is because of how easy they are to get and the things that you can get with them. Like, uh, like candy bars or a small bag of Takis, you can even get binders. Last time I earned a Grizz Buck was when I was taking in the food and some Mr. Jones gave it to me because I do that every day. You can also earn Grizz Bucks from like um, cleaning up trash or helping others. And there was this one time when I picked up um, trash on the floor and put it in the janitor's garbage and the janitor gave it to me. Give me the Grizzba, not the garbage. <laughs> like in Granite Park, how we earn Grizzbucks is basically following pride rules, being prepared for class, and like filling out the planners, or excellence, like getting ready and doing our best, or dedication, taking our C notes. Each teacher has, and other staff members have, their name printed on the Grizzbuck. So when those come back, we can kind of get an idea of 
which teachers are handing them out more than others. On Fridays we do a little drawing during our faculty professional development uh, where we'll draw Grizzbucks out of a pile of teachers who have given Grizzbucks out and then they'll get a small reward as well. All in all, I think the system has been helpful to our students and the staff and teachers as well. I'm Brenda Zimmerman, Assistant Principal at Cypress High, and I'm going to tell you about our PBIS program here at Cypress. We have the Cypress Way, and the Cypress Way includes three expectations, respect, responsibility, and excellence. We teach our kids what that looks like here at our school in each area, and when we see kids who are doing that, we give them a C card. The C card looks like this. On this side of the C card, it has our three expectations, respect, responsibility, and excellence. Each teacher is given um, a stamp that has their room number on it so that we can track who, the, who issued the card. The teacher stamps, if he sees someone being excellent, they would stamp right there. And then the student can bring it down to the Redemption Center. We scan the card and it tells us which level of prize that they get. I got my C card by Mr. Worley, English teacher over at Cypress Brockbank campus. I got my C card for having great grades. I got from Miss Tuckett, my counselor. Uh, for going to pirate hour and taking, making up a test. I got it by respect. I'm standing outside the door greeting everyone as they walked in or walked by by saying good morning. And I took it to the office. They gave me a prize, I got a nice lanyard. I got my C card from Miss Marshall. For excellence. She likes me because I don't talk in class. <laughs> in my classroom and health classes, I use mine for pirate hours when kids are responsible and remember to take the initiative to come get a reteach, take a test, or get missing notes. There's levels one, two, three, four, five, and we also have other prizes such as um, extended lunch hour, uh, passes to dances, passes to football games, things like that built into the program. So we try to do as many things as we can think of that the kids would want to earn. These are all random, so the teachers are given so many cards at the beginning of each term and they just hand them out. They have no idea if they're issuing a level one or a level five, and the students no don't know either until they come down to the Redemption Center. And once we scan it, we let them go in and they choose their prize. And so it, there's just kind of a mystery about it, and it's fun, and it's been working well here at Cypress.